Hi, welcome back. If you've been following along with these blaster series of videos, you might have already seen the video I did on these neat little motor controllers, the BG431B ESC1s. In this video, I showed you how to measure and calculate the different values you need to set up the sensorless FOC firmware. The firmware is written with Arduino using a library called SimpleFOC. Link to the firmware down in the description. The video focused on motors that are connected internally as a Y or star configuration. In this video, I'm going to cover how to do the same thing, but for delta configurations. I'll also go into a bit more detail about how the firmware achieves sensorless censored control and then how you can modify it to do bi-directional velocity control so you can see how easy it is to do this for yourself. But before we do that, we need to take a little closer look at the motor controller. It's a BG431B ESC1. And just for the record, I broke this one. On top of being fairly inexpensive and somewhat powerful, it also has low side current sensing which just means we can indirectly measure how much current is flowing through each phase. And if we characterize the motor, like we did in the last video, we can use the low side current sense to infer the rotor's angle. The firmware is already set up to handle the current sensing and to use that as its position sensor. These values are specific to this motor controller's low side current sensing, and it will only work with these controllers. Tangent Max here. I wanted to point out that we're measuring the back EMF voltage to determine the rotor's angle. Back EMF is the product of moving a coil through a magnetic field. If we plot the voltage while we turn the motor, it should look like a sine wave. This voltage can be thought of as an electrical angle, and it will correspond to the motor's mechanical angle or physical angle, 0 to 360 degrees. But one full cycle of the electrical angle does not usually directly correspond to one full rotation of the mechanical angle. This relationship changes depending on the characteristics of your motor, specifically the number of pull pairs in your rotor. So this is a good time to move on to characterizing the delta connected BLDC motors. And if you watched the last video, it's going to be very similar. Figuring out the pull pairs and KV is exactly the same. The only things that are different are how we calculate the phase resistance and inductance. And really the only difference is with these measurements, we're going to multiply by 1.5 instead of dividing them by 2 like we did before. Don't ask me why. It's because in the delta configuration, when we measure across two phase wires using a multimeter, we're actually measuring across two parallel paths, one of which is what we want to measure. The other is two phases in series. And because of that, it should have two times the resistance. This results in a measurement that is two thirds of a single phase resistance. So multiplying this by 1.5 will give us the value we were trying to measure. Likewise, for inductance, you need to grab an LCR, set it to measure inductance at 40 kilohertz, and multiply your measured value by 1.5. When you're measuring your inductance, don't forget to remove your rotor because the magnets will affect your measurement. With all of that out of the way, we can just wang jangle these new numbers into the firmware. If you need help with the other values, go watch the other video. It's linked down in the description. Now, why didn't I just write the firmware so that you can define whether your motor is a delta or a Y configuration? It's because I'm lazy. Now, modifying the firmware to do bi-directional control is genuinely pretty simple. Right now, it's set up to accept a normal PWM signal on pin PA15. That's this one here. Our PWM signal from our controller goes from about 1,000 to 2,000 seconds, which maps the minimum to the maximum velocity values. This is in radians per second, 0 to 3,000. To change this, we need to make the minimum value negative. This also means that I should change the PWM signal my controller outputs because zero velocity is now about 1500 seconds. And now it will just go backwards. Whee! 
so while I was editing that section, I noticed it's kind of hard to see which direction these motors are going. And I went and grabbed another motor to try and make it a little easier for you to see the direction that the motor's spinning. I went ahead and updated the values in the firmware to match the values of this motor. Where'd my controller go? There it is. There we go. Hopefully you can see it spinning now. Faster. And now we'll go backwards. Oh yeah, that's working really well. I also want to point out that if you're just using velocity control, you don't necessarily need to use closed loop control. And the firmware works really well in open loop mode. The main reason that I'm using closed loop is because in the open loop mode, my motors were getting so hot they were melting my 3D prints. In closed loop mode, the controllers will use the minimum amount of power required to reach their target, whether that's velocity, angle, or torque. So in my case, the motors were staying way cooler in closed loop mode. This firmware is pretty bare bones, which means it's also really adaptable. And it's available for you to download on my Patreon. Okay, thanks. Bye. I, I think I just had an idea. Maybe it might load itself now. <gasps> nice. The Finger Eater 9000. Ah, pretty happy with that.